So let us continue studying different kind of regression models. Um, I'm sorry, I, I have some backlog with answering your questions and uh, some other uh, some other things that I had to do. Uh, but I hope that I will be able to answer everybody in uh, uh, in the nearest time. So uh, let us continue. And uh, today's lecture can be entitled uh, Regressions uh, Beyond Linearity. Um, this is not very strictly uh, because basically we continue studying linear or generalized linear models. Uh, but uh, uh, here I will describe how to take into account uh, different kind of non-linearities that uh, we can meet with uh, in our uh, data analysis. And uh, first uh, I want to discuss a simple case uh, when uh, we have some clearly uh, not uh, not linear dependence, uh, non linear dependence between uh, independent and dependent variables. Uh, so, uh, some examples of non linear dependence. And uh, we can begin with, uh, for example, uh, rather economical uh, example uh, rather than linguistical, but uh, I hope that uh, the meaning uh, will be clear. Uh, if you are interested in something like salary of a person and uh, you are, are interested uh, in how this salary uh, is related to something like age, uh, then uh, you probably have a graph uh, that is not uh, uh, is not linear. Um, I think that uh, the relation between salary and age uh, can be described by something like this. Uh, so. Uh, when you are young, uh, your salary can uh, increase uh, as age increases because you uh, become more experienced, uh, you uh, get better education, and so your salary grows uh, rather quickly. Uh, but uh, for some, uh, when you become more mature, uh, the dependence uh, with age, um, the growth rate of uh, salary with age uh, become not very, uh, not very large. Uh, this uh, growth rate uh, begins to be uh, near zero, probably. And uh, after some time, it is possible that you uh, retire uh, from work. And uh, at this point, your salary, actually your retirement, uh, retirement page, uh, pension, uh, can be a rather small again. Uh, so, uh, when we consider uh, this dependence uh, of salary with respect to age, uh, for some people in one industry, for example, of one of one occupation, something like this, uh, we can we can expect that uh, this dependence is um, not linear, but something uh, that has uh, some point of maximum and uh, even can even start declining at some point. And uh, this line, uh, okay, basically you can, uh, you can approximate this kind of dependence but by uh, something linear. You can say that uh, this dependence is something like this uh, line. But uh, we understand that uh, this, um, uh, this approximation is uh, rather rough. It is not. It is not very exact. Uh, and we understand also that um, uh, this approximation has some kind of systematic errors. 
it is systematically, for example, it is systematically underestimates uh, salary of people who are here. And uh, so uh, it is possible that you have some you have some reasons to believe uh, that your uh, correct uh, relation between salary and age is not linear, but uh, it is something like this. Uh, do you know any kind of mathematical functions that can be visualized by a graph that looks like uh, like this green line? Any ideas, any candidates for this kind of function? So this is linear law. Uh, this is like um, salary equals to uh, some beta naught plus some beta h times h, right? And uh, what about this line? Are there any ways to describe this line as a function? Maybe it kind of looks like a upside down parabola. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good approximation. And you can, you can expect that uh, this is indeed at the second, at the second approximation, uh, you have something, something like a parabola. If this is a, this is a part of parabola draw, but uh, you can imagine that you can uh, continue it somewhere here. And indeed it looks like, it, it looks like a parabola. Uh, basically, if you have something, some line that grows and then declines, then probably you can try to approximate it uh, with, uh, with some parabolic line. And uh, that means that you have to consider different model, model like salary equals to beta naught plus uh, beta h times h. And what have I add? Uh, what have I? No, what? Uh, what I need to add uh, to um, to make a parabola? What is the equation of parabola? So this is like y equals to some uh, constant plus uh, b times x plus a times x square. And in this case, x uh, is our age, right? So we have to include x square. And so it means that we have to include a new variable uh, that is called uh, x uh, h square. And uh, we have to add another coefficient beta that corresponds to h square. Uh, and then you can fit uh, this model instead of uh, this model. Instead of this model. And uh, this is what uh, people in economics usually do. Uh, they usually consider uh, variables like salary as uh, this quadratic uh, quadratic variable that depends on age when they consider this dependency. So you probably can think about uh, some other dependencies that um, can behave like like these parabolas. But basically, you can try to add more terms. You can. You can visually uh, virtually add uh, any uh, power here, for example, x cube or x4 and so on, but I don't recommend it because your model become rather unstable and uninterpretable. And basically I'm not sure that it is, that there exists any real world models when you need third degree of your variable. But anyway, you can uh, you can uh, fit this kind of model, and in fact, this model looks uh, a bit nonlinear because you have square here. But in fact, you can use the same tool, uh, the same R functions, uh, to fit this model uh, because you can just think about it in the following way: 
your head uh, table when you have salary and age like something like this and uh, then uh, you can add a new column to your table and uh, this column will be just calculated by um, taking a um, uh, square of your age so you add variable age squared and this is not a result of measurement this is a result of calculation and this h squared uh, will be oh i cannot uh, calculate squares of such large numbers uh, in my in my head so i will use calculator this is uh, 289 and then i have uh, 324 and here I have 900 and so on so you just simply add a column and then you fit a new model uh, to this data now it is not a univariate regression it is bivariate regression but basically both variables measure the same thing the same age but uh, you obtain this 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 law so this is the first example of extracting some nonlinear dependence in your in your data uh, can i ask a question sure uh, i i don't think i understand why we need h square uh well uh we believe uh or we see from the data or we have a good theoretical, uh, a good theoretical uh, explanation, uh, a, a good theoretical grounds to uh, to say that our relation is uh, nonlinear. And uh, for example, we we can expect that uh, this this relation is given by something like uh, something like quadratic laws. Uh, it means graf graphically that we have something like parabola and uh, to, to uh, write a parabola, um, to write a function uh, whose graph uh, is parabola, you have to, you have to write uh, something like, okay, you, uh, you know from, fr from school uh, that parabola is something like uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, and in our case uh, x is just a horizontal variable here it is h so to obtain a parabola i have to add this term h squared uh, that represents this x squared and multiply it by its own coefficient that corresponds to this a so basically if you have this coefficient to be equal to zero if it is zero then it means that you have a almost linear relationship but if you have uh, if you have some kind of decline in uh, the velocity of growth uh, the growth rate uh, as age increases uh, if uh, your growth rate decreases like on this picture so here your salary growth growth rate is large and here it is smaller and here it is even negative then uh, you can try to use uh, this this parabolic law uh, have I answered your question or not? Uh, I think yes, but I just uh, I remember from school, right? That they tell us that to build a parabola, we need uh, a square, a square, and I just never understood why, where, what exactly the x square does. So uh, like, what what no what what uh, what this uh, thing does? Yeah, well, just why do we need a x square? when we built a parabola i guess it's just a uh, it's not really a question that fits yeah. into the <laughs> mm. our so uh, without this term if, if if we have only this function then we have a linear relationship and uh, its graph is uh, is just a straight line 
here. So okay. uh, to to represent graph that looks like like this, I have to add uh, a quadratic term. Is it what you are asking about or, or not? I guess, but I guess my question is really just weird because I, I just never I don't understand how X two makes the parabola. But I don't think that's the, I think it's a mathematics question that I got I never got an explanation for it. <laughs> so I guess I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, okay. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, the graph of this function is parabola, and uh, well, let's. Uh, uh, for example, you can just try to to draw this graph using computer tools, or just try to uh, do it manually, and uh, uh, how to say it? Uh, actually. Uh, Sometimes uh, it is said that uh, a lot of stuff in mathematics uh, cannot be understood, but uh, people can, um, uh, uh, well, how to say it? Короче говоря, люди привыкают к тому, что некоторые вещи формулируются некоторым образом. So people uh, are used uh, to become aware that something is given uh, using some equations. So. So this is uh, this is parabola. Uh, other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then uh, another example. Uh, again, with uh, non-linear dependence between uh, your variables. Uh, actually, uh, uh, this is an example that I uh, already used, but uh, let us make it a little bit more realistic. Let us assume that uh, I'm studying uh, how fast people learn language and uh, we consider small children. So we have children of age one, two, three, and four, five, and so on. And uh, we have size of vocabulary here. And previously, I tried to speculate that uh, this growth is linear. So every year, um, uh, our kids learn some fixed amount of uh, words. So for example, every year, they learn 100 new words. But um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, very familiar with uh, so small children, but uh, I believe that I'm a little bit pessimistic in my estimates about uh, the growth rate of uh, vocabulary size uh, of um, kids. Uh, probably it is more natural to consider something like geometric law. I mean, uh, I mean, for example, that. Uh, very small uh, kids uh, do not speak at all or just know a couple of words like mama, papa. And uh, then they start talking. And uh, then uh, probably uh, it, is, uh, it is possible that every year uh, they, they uh, for example, double uh, their vocabulary size. So it is possible that uh, the correct law uh, works like uh, like this. So probably we have several uh, several uh, several kids in our sample, but uh, I can expect uh, that I will see something like this. So every time, every year, I double or multiply by some other constant my vocabulary size. Yeah, how do you think? Which is more realistic? I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a kid specialist. I'm not a parent. And um, so, how do you think? Uh, uh, which is more realistic? Uh, that uh, we have a linear growth like this, or that we have this kind of exponential growth like this, uh, like double every year. Mm, I think? think it is exponential growth, but 
uh, at some point uh, it should stop because I'm not sure that, for example, I um, that uh, that me personally at my age I learn mm. yeah. uh, the yeah. same amount of vocabulary as uh, I uh, I was learning in the childhood. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's that's correct. Uh, uh, I mean that of course we have some moment of saturation when uh, this graph becomes uh, more or less horizontal or at least linear. Uh, but uh, but let us consider only uh, small kids uh, like of these kind of ages. Uh, does it look uh, more reasonable to think about this growth? as exponential growth, like double every year. Uh, and um, so I don't know if if anybody have uh, uh, evidence uh, that contradict my uh, wild guess, uh, let me know. I don't know. I just didn't have a corresponding experience, but it looks reasonable for me, OK? And uh, in this case, again, uh, I can try to use linear model. But again, uh, it is simple to see that this model is not very good. Um, because just the underlying law is just different. And uh, if I want to use linear regression with this kind of data that like growth exponentially, then uh, uh, one way to deal with this is to transform uh, to transform my uh, dependent variable. I can transform dependent variable. Uh, for example, I can consider not size of vocabulary in number of words. Uh, so it, it, it can be number of words. But uh, instead, I can consider, uh, for example, if I expect that my growth is linear, uh, I can consider, who can try to guess? Uh, I want uh, to consider some function of number of words instead of just number of words. Who can guess which function? In fact, you uh, you even used this function in one of the homeworks, even if you didn't realize that, because it this preprocessing was done before you obtained the data but it was written in in the comments uh, to the homework. Uh, exponential plot uh, is reasonable. I'm not sure that I understand what is exponential plot. Uh, I can... I mean, uh, the exponential growth, uh, the plot uh, that you draw in mm -hmm. the red that shows, yeah, because I, I have found out some real data that uh, 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 and uh, in this data, um, uh, uh, the uh, growth see, of expressive uh -huh. vocabulary, yes. Yeah, so so my my intuitive feeling that it should be exponential are reasonable. Okay, so if, if I want to deal with linear models, but uh, I also want to catch this kind of exponential growth. In fact, what I can do is I can use logarithm uh, so uh, I can logarithm of number of words instead of number of words. So this is the same thing as to switch to logarithmic scale uh, uh, here in y axis. And uh, this is what is usually done. In this case, uh, if you expect that, for example, that logarithm of number of words 
if you expect that this logarithm is linear function, something like uh, beta naught plus uh, beta h times h, uh, then um, you can uh, find how number of words depend on uh, this thing. So how can I uh, how can I transform this equality so that I have this le left hand side? Let me uh, recall that logarithm is inverse function of exponential. So logarithm of um, so if I have some uh, if I have some value if I have some value x and uh, then I find logarithm x and uh, then I find uh, for example e to the power logarithm x then I get x again. So if I have x and uh, then I apply logarithm, then I get, oh, sorry. So if I get x and I apply logarithm function, I get logarithm x. And if I apply exponential function to this logarithm, then I just do um, a backward step. And so e to the power logarithm of x is uh, the same thing as x. So taking logarithm and taking exponential function are mutually inverse. So I can, uh, I can do the following thing. Uh, if I have this kind of equality, so I model a logarithm of number of words as linear function of h, then uh, how number of words depend on h. Anybody can write uh, the formula. In fact, I can do it in the following way. So I have logarithm here. Then I can take exponential function of the left hand side and of the right hand side. So exponential function of this thing equals to exponential function of this thing, right? Uh, now uh, how to write this equality? What is the right hand side of this equality? What is the opposite of exponential? Sorry? Uh, what is what is there an opposite to exponential? Uh, taking of logarithm is the opposite of exponential. So uh, exponential function and logarithm function are uh, uh, mutually inverse. So exponential function looks like looks like this and logarithm function uh, looks like this. So this is e to the power x and this is logarithm y. So if I know that uh, exponential function of logarithm of x is the same as x, uh, how can I simplify this uh, equality? Anybody? 
using this identity. It uh, equals to the number of words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this thing actually equals to this thing. Right? So, uh, this equation is equivalent to the following equation. That number of words is exponential of uh, some linear function of h. So, this is a kind of exponential uh, of h, just shifted a little bit or stretched or something like this. But uh, this is uh, the law that governs uh, that governs some exponential growth, and so if you take logarithm of your uh, of your uh, dependent variable, uh, you switch from considering linear relation to consider this kind of exponential relation. For example, uh, if my uh, let me. Let me give you an example. If uh, my initial data are like uh, here, number of words. For example, something like this. Okay, let me use. Uh, If my data looks like this, so we double uh, this value every time, every year. Uh, then uh, if I take logarithm, okay, let me use not, not, uh, not uh, natural logarithm, but logarithm uh, uh, model two. Uh, so logarithm of number of words is two, three, four, five. And we see that there is a linear relationship between this logarithm and this here. So this is another example uh, when you can deal with uh, non-linear law, uh, but uh, basically you use the same linear model as before. Uh, you simply transform uh, your dependent variable. Okay, uh, next example. Uh, this example is called interactions. And uh, let us consider uh, the following story. Uh, let us assume that we have, uh, let us assume that we have um, uh, uh, the following study that deals with um, two categorical variables. Uh, we have uh, some, we are interested in uh, some new educational program and uh, there are two two kinds of programs. So we have educational program and this educational program can be either uh, either classical or innovative. And also you have uh, schools of different types. Assume that uh, we have another variable type of school. And uh, schools can be public and private. And uh, assume that you expect that both variables uh, can affect uh, some some 
learning outcomes, uh, the results of your education. And assume that you have uh, some study or in this study, uh, we asked some schools to use uh, innovative educational problem, uh, program. And some of these schools uh, that tried to use this innovative educational problem, uh, program were public and some of them were private. And uh, then we compare educational results of uh, students uh, of different types of schools. And uh, our data set looks like uh, the following. Uh, we have program, we have school type, and uh, we have some result, for example, exam score. And for each school, uh, we know this, uh, these values. For example, we have some school uh, that uses classical uh, program uh, with public school type. Um, this, this, this is public school and we have uh, exam score. Let us assume that this is average exam school, uh, exam score for the whole school. Um, and uh, we have another school uh, which also classical and this is private school and we have 75 and we have innovative some public school we have 65 and we have innovative some public school we have 71 and we have innovative in some private school and we have 81 and so on we have a table like this and uh, then i want to study effect of uh, these variables on their exam score so I uh, want to understand, is it true that innovative uh, program increase uh, average exam score? And uh, if yes, uh, how much uh, does it increase? And uh, so I want to, I want to uh, find this effect. Uh, what kind of uh, model would you propose to answer this question? So my question is how good is innovative innovative program and how would you test uh, how would you answer this question using uh, using regression models So I have data of this type and I'm interested in this question. Uh, are there any ideas uh, how to test the uh, effect of this innovative program compared to the classical program? If I want to use a regression. So first we could create two plots. Uh, uh, I don't know, I think they would be simple plots like one dot is uh, 70, one dot is 75. And um, uh, it's uh, the first plot. And uh, the second plot, uh, we, uh, we put uh, uh, three dots for the innovative program. We connect them and we have the second plot and we, uh, we compare. Uh, yeah, but... So you have some picture like this. So, and what do you compare? Mm. No, uh, 
I think on the uh, uh, on the X uh, no. Uh, uh, uh. So uh, I, I should uh, maybe introduce uh, to axis and maybe axis uh, Y would be the exam score, and the axis X would be. Um, I don't know. No, no, uh, no. X is X is just uh, uh, is just program. So on your picture, you have two groups. Yeah, in fact, uh, this is not the end of uh, the table, so we can continue. To we probably have some more data. Something like this. So what uh, what do you do next? Mm, so maybe uh, I don't know. I would look uh, on the number of the uh, high exam scores, and uh, in this plot I see that uh, the highest exam scores are in the innovative program, uh, and uh, also I see that uh, there are more dots that are higher in the yeah. innovative program. Yeah. Yeah, we can, you can. Uh, this, yeah, this is a good. Uh, this is a good first step to draw a picture like this or uh, some kind of bar plot. Oh, sorry, box plot. Uh, something like this. Um, and analyze this box plot. Yeah, this is a good first step, but uh, this will not give your any exact statements, any statistically rigorous statements. And also, I want to take into account not only program, but I also want to take into account this school type variable. So I want to take into account both variables and I want to use regression model to do that. How can I do it? So maybe we should uh, do uh, this uh, thing when we wrote this uh, betas, uh, beta zero, beta h, mm -hmm. etc. So we, we should uh, think about what yes. uh, variable, uh, what variable we will put uh, in uh, in our in our for formula. Yes. yes. So in yes. the previous it was h, and here um, I don't know. So we have three variables. Yes. First of all, let us let us decide which variable will be dependent variable. That is uh, that is left hand side variable like like this or this. So we are looking for the we are looking for the exam score. So maybe mm -hmm. uh, it should be the dependent variable. So exam score is dependent variable. Okay. So exam score uh, depends linearly on what? Um, okay, let me begin with beta naught, which is intercept. And uh, how to add? We have two. We have two um, categorical variables, and how to add them into our regression model? Actually, we discussed this two days ago, at Saturday. So how to include uh, these two categorical variables in our model? Mm, so it would be some something like uh, I don't know, um, beta of program uh, multiplied to program plus beta of school type multiply of yeah. school type. But it it makes no sense. Maybe no. The the, uh, the problem uh, the problem is that. Uh, program and school type are categorical variables and we cannot multiply anything on value like classical. This is not a number. So how to deal with it? Maybe I think it reminds us something from our last class when we 
for categorical variables, we sort of named them for like the zero and one, and one would be like, is that the mm -hmm. I'm thinking back in different. So yes. like the absence of, uh, or like the, I don't know, classical would be zero, innovation would be one. And then, mm -hmm. Yes, let us, uh, let us make, let us make dummy encoding. Let us encode our uh, variables that we have here. Let us encode them as um, dummy variables. So for example, we have a beta uh, that is uh, that is related to variable like uh, program uh, program innovative. So we have variable dummy variable that is related to that checks to that program is innovative. And uh, we also have a beta that corresponds to another variable like school private times the dummy variable that measures that school is private. Uh, okay, it, it is a bit, uh, uh, I don't want to write this beta every time as beat the program innovative. So let me let me denote this beta as beta one. And uh, there's another beta as beta two. And uh, let us uh, and let us discuss uh, the meaning of these betas. And in fact, to do it, let me draw the following table. So I have four possible cases, in fact. I have program and I have school type. And I have four possible cases, uh, first case when we have okay uh, pro uh, program can be classical or innovative and school type can be public and private and uh now we believe in this model and uh, let us uh, write down in these four cells the values uh, that our model predicts as an exam score uh, depending on values of uh, these and these variables. So what about classical, uh, what about public schools that follow classical uh, program? Uh, what our model predicts for their exam score. Which is the value of exam score for such schools according to our model. So if I consider uh, if I consider school that is public and that uses classical uh, classical program, according to my model, what is the value of exam score for this kind of school? What is uh, zero and what is one in this case? So, um, uh, what? Uh, uh, so we consider uh, classical zero and innovative one. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, look, uh, if if I write that this variable is dummy variable uh, program innovative, uh, then it means that it is zero. Uh, okay. Um, this is one if program is innovative. 
and zero otherwise. So basically, what is what is one in is is written here. If I say that this dummy variable is called program innovative, then it means that it simply checks that program is innovative, and in this case, it returns one. Otherwise, it returns zero. And the same for this dummy variable. This variable checks that uh, school is private. Okay, so it would be just uh, equals, so it will equal to beta naught. Exactly. Beta naught. Exactly. This is just beta naught because uh, for uh, for classical program, uh, this uh, this dummy variable equals to zero, and for public school, uh, this dummy variable is also equals to zero. So this is beta naught, correct? So, what about what about this? Okay, uh, what about this uh, this cell? What about cell uh, for public school and innovative program? So it would be uh, beta not uh, plus uh, beta um, school uh, no plus beta program innovative uh, multiply to uh, dummy variable program innovative. Uh, and uh, what is the value of dummy variable program innovative for uh, if uh, the value uh, of yes, variable yes. program is innovative? Yes, yes, it is just one. So it 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 would be just beta uh, beta not plus uh, uh, plus beta one. Yeah, yes. this thing. Mm -hmm. I just for this is just for brevity. I just don't want to write this long index here. I just write beta one. This is just for brevity. Okay, everybody agree with that? Okay, then uh, somebody else, please, uh, who can say me, who can, who, who can tell me what should I write here? Beta not plus beta two. Plus beta two, correct. And uh, again, somebody else, please, uh, who can who can tell me what should I write here? Beta not plus beta two plus uh, plus beta one plus beta two. Mm -hmm. Correct. So let us now uh, now let us look at this table, and uh, let us look at these betas. So we see that uh, we have a simple explanation of um, uh, which beta uh, measures which uh, which value. Uh, practically, this uh, beta program innovative it measures uh, how numbers in this column are different uh, with respect to numbers in this column. Right, so I have to, if I have some number here, I have just to add beta one to obtain number here. And uh, the same here. So uh, currently this beta two is effect of, sorry, uh, this, uh, this beta one is effect of innovative program. Uh, and uh, this effect of innovative program does not depend on the school type. And this is what we have in classical linear model, in fact. But uh, now if we look at uh, this table very carefully, we see a rather important, rather important effect. We see that uh, we have one effect of innovative program and another effect of uh, private school uh, which is given by beta 2 and if we switch both uh, if we consider innovative school and private program 
and compare it with classical school with public um, sorry public school with classical program then uh, this difference is just a sum of two effects we have effect of uh, innovative uh, program and we have effect of private school and if both uh, are activated then they just uh, sum up we have a sum of two effects and nothing more but sometimes it is not the case it is possible to imagine a situation when uh, for example for public school it uh, there is no any difference between classical and innovative program for example because innovative program needs uh, more attention from the teachers and teachers in public school uh, uh, has too many duties and they don't have time to follow this innovative program in a good way and so it is possible for example that innovative program simply doesn't work in uh, public schools but it works in private schools it is possible to consider this case and uh, this case is not covered by this model at all as you see so in this model uh, the difference between classical and innovative uh, programs are the same for public and private schools. This is given by uh, the same number beta 1, beta 1 here and beta 1 here. So, uh, in other words, uh, we can expect, at least we can consider, Uh, a case uh, when uh, innovative program uh, interacts uh, with uh, private school. Interacts uh, means that you don't have simply a sum of two terms, but you have something more that if you switch both, if you switch from public school to private school, you have some increase in, you have some increase in uh, your exam score. If you switch from a classical program to innovative program, you add uh, some, you add some score. But if you switch both, they interact with each other and uh, they increase our, um, our uh, exam score uh, more uh, than uh, the sum of uh, just two terms. Uh, so uh, we probably can, uh, we can expect something like uh, let me redraw this uh, table school type program Classical innovative public private and we can expect to see something like uh, for example here I have 50 uh, as an average and here I have for example 55 and uh, here I have for example uh, 57 and here I have uh, for example 81 so uh, we can think about this table in the following terms uh, we can say that uh, switch from classical to innovative program for public school increases uh, increases 
uh, exam score by five. Switch from classical uh, to innovative program. Increases score by five. So I can uh, I can call it uh, program effect. And uh, switch from public school to private school. Uh, gives uh, increases score by seven. So this is school type effect. Uh, but if you if you activate both effects, then um, Uh, you get increase uh, not by five plus seven points, uh, but okay. I have to subtract uh, from eighty eighty one. I have to subtract uh, fifty seven. It is too complicated problem for me. And so five plus seven is 12 points, but here I have uh, 24 points. So 12 points more than, than sum of effects. Okay, let me uh, let me use a, a little bit different numbers. Let me put here 82 just to uh, avoid uh, the same numbers. Can you please tell one more time how did you decide that innovative program increases score by five? Because ah. Just I just uh, I just put these numbers from my head, and then I just uh, see the difference, this difference, and this difference, and then I see at this difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, if I have data like this, then it is not reasonable to use uh, this kind of model. Uh, because this model just says that I have uh, the same effect of innovative school for public and private schools. That effects of uh, school, uh, uh, the effect of a program and effect of school are just sum up. They just, you just have two effects and they just sum up. But it is possible that you can think uh, about this kind of uh, uh, table. And in this table, there is no this linearity, no this summation. You see that due to interaction of, so basically in, in simple terms, uh, this table just means that innovative program is well suited for private schools. It is not so suited for public schools. It gives only a small uh, increase, but it is very well suited for private schools. So uh, this is given. This is given by this additional additional term, and we can catch this additional term using uh, linear regression as well. In fact, to do it, um, I have to consider the following regression model. Uh, I have score 
again, this is beta naught plus uh, beta one times, let me see, beta one times program innovative. But as I understood in the first example, not only uh, the fact that innovative approach is used uh, increase the results, but also the fact that schools are private too, yes? Uh, yes, both effects were taken into account. But we uh, expected that, uh, F, uh, that we have some additive effects. So um, the only way how they, uh, how they uh, can work both is just by adding the corresponding effect. So we have effect of uh, innovative program, this is beta one. We have effect of private uh, school, this is beta two. And if both are uh, turned on, then uh, both terms are added. And this is the only way uh, in, in this model, in our original model, this is the only way how these two effects can, uh, can work together. So we take into account both effects, but we expect here that they just simply sum up. But sometimes effects does not simply sum up. Sometimes something more complicated happens. And in this example, we can imagine, we can imagine this. We can imagine that, uh, for example, uh, as I said, that uh, private schools are better suited to innovative program. And in this case, uh, this cell will be larger than just sum of two effects, just 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 like in this in this table. And this is what I'm trying to catch by my new regression model. Okay. Okay. So let us try to invent this uh, new regression model. So I, uh, I start with uh, the same model as before. I have beta one times uh, program innovative, beta two times uh, school private. And now I want to add a new term that will measure this thing, that will measure this additional, additional improvement that we have uh, due to interaction of innovative program and private schools. How to catch uh, how to catch this effect? What term should I add here to catch uh, to catch this this value? Any ideas? Mm, so it kind of a cumulative effect, but mm, so it means that uh, the pure sum is more than mm, yeah, you have pure sum in just these two terms. These two terms are perfectly sum up and they give us sum of, of Can you effects. scroll a little bit higher for us? Mm -hmm. No, 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 lower. Here? Mm, to get in case. Why 13 points more? Uh, I just uh, I fixed mm -hmm. uh, I fixed this number and so uh, this is now uh, mm -hmm. this is gives me mm -hmm. oh I'm not sure that I'm correct in fact let me uh, let me let me check that uh, I did my arithmetic right probably probably I did not Ah, no, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, this is correct. So uh, we have uh, this value is larger than this value by 25 points. Sorry, no, it is impossible. I, um, sorry. 
uh, this is incorrect arithmetic here. Let me let me fix it. So uh, activated increase not by twelve points, uh, but by thirty two points. And uh, then it means that this is not a thirteen points, but twenty points more. Okay, now everything everything works. But now you counted the difference between public and yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. compare. Uh, I start with this number. And then I, I see if I activate uh, mm -hmm. innovative, uh, innovative, uh, then it increases by five. Mm -hmm. If I increase, uh, if I if I activate this uh, thing, mm -hmm. that I add seven. Mm -hmm. So the the sum of two effects are, are twelve. But uh, in fact, the difference between this number and this number is thirty-two. Mm -hmm. So I have to add twelve, and then I have to add extra twenty points. And these twenty points are the interaction that I want to, I want to catch. But why twenty extra points? Uh, well, because twenty plus uh, because uh, because twenty plus twelve uh, is thirty-two. So the the actual the actual increase is thirty-two, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this increase of 32 is, uh, can be decomposed in just sum of two effects, uh, which is 12 um. and uh, 20 points extra, which is, which is our um. uh, interaction. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you for your question because uh, there was an error here that uh, make it more difficult to understand, uh, but now I hope that uh, everything is fixed. Uh, and so uh, just ask more questions if something is not clear. So, okay. So now we should understand uh, where, uh, where did we get uh, this uh, 20, uh, 20 more points. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I, I, yes. I, I want to, I want to update my uh, regression model uh, so that this new regression model can catch uh, these twenty points. So my previous model only catched some additive effects, but now I want to catch this uh, this non-additive interaction. How to do it? I want to add something, some new term here some new beta 3 and what should I multiply beta 3 by to get mm, to beta 0 no mm, because uh, so we um, we considered the difference between um, uh, between uh, 82 and 50 uh, and uh, um, no, between uh, 82 minus 50 minus. Um, well, well if I just equation. if I just multiply it by b to one, it doesn't make sense because in this thing will be just a new constant, and uh, this is no different with uh, this one constant. Maybe uh, multiply mm -hmm. by d innovative and d private. And uh, how this uh, new dummy variable should work? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have to invent a new dummy variable that will uh, that allows us to distinguish this cell from all other cells. But it is so uh, like complicated. It's not just. Uh... It's not just plus something or multiplying by something. It's more complicated. Not more complicated than multiplying, <laughs> in fact. Okay, let us try to multiply something. Uh, so uh, let us consider multiplication of, of these two dummy variables, just as an example.
uh, let us look at this model and let us uh, and let us uh, draw the same the same table as before so this is program this is school type and again 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 I have classical and innovative programs classical innovative and here I have public and private and let us put values here for example What should I put here according to this model? Mm, let us forget about uh, the previous table. Let us think about only this model. So in the first cell, it should be uh, beta zero. Yes, beta zero. Okay, and what about uh, what about this cell? Beta zero plus beta one beta plus, zero plus. Uh, um, but but we also have uh, this uh, beta three, uh, and if uh, uh, dummy variable for program. In innovative equals to one, but uh, but then dummy variable for school private equals to zero, so then we we'll lose that to three. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If at least one of these two dummy variables is zero, then their product is zero. So we don't have this term in this cell. Right. Ah, yes, so we, we get um, the same table with the exception that in the fourth uh, cell there would be a, a better three variable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, indeed we have the same beta, beta, beta naught plus beta two here, but in the last cell here, uh, this dummy variable takes value one, this dummy variable takes value one, so both of them are one. And so their product is also one. So we have uh, bit three here as well. So uh, indeed we see that this beta three uh, measures uh, an extra effect uh, that corresponds to the interaction between this uh, this uh, private school and this innovative program. So with the three measures extra effect. I say extra, I mean that we are already take into account effect of uh, innovative school and effect of private uh, program. Both uh, of these effects are also are always uh, are already uh, uh, taken into account by this bit one and beta two, but if we have something more, then it is taken by this beta three. Measures extra effect of interaction uh, between private school and innovative program. And uh, this is what we have here. In fact, uh, it is easy to do all of uh, this stuff that we discussed uh, here in R 
uh, because, uh, for example, R can construct for you these dummy variables. Uh, R can construct for you these interaction variables uh, like this. Uh, also, R can construct for you uh, this these new columns on the fly. You can just put this uh, h squared into your model in the correct way with correct syntax and it will do it automatically for you. And in fact, it is easy to transform dependent variables uh, as well in R. Uh, so let us make a 10 minutes break and then continue. Um, okay. Can so, I... Yes, yes. Mm. So what can be a bit uh, like zero, for example, in this table? How to find it? Uh, how to find uh, how to find these values? Mm -hmm. In fact, if you have uh, if you have model exactly like this, uh, your actual values of uh, these betas are found uh, just by looking at this table. If at this table we have average values in the corresponding group. So we have several public schools with classical program and we average uh, their results uh, and we put it here and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. then, uh, then we will calculate uh, this, uh, these betas simply by, um, for example, to find beta one, we have to, we have to subtract value here. Uh, from value here, we have to subtract value here and so on. Mm, so bit one, I understand. For example, in this table, it's like uh, 50, yes? Uh, yes, uh, like... in this table, in this table, bit one is just five. Because uh -huh. it is difference between this, uh, this thing and this thing. Bit one is five. Yes. A bit zero. A bit zero is this 50. It mm -hmm. is a kind of base level. Mm -hmm. Bit zero is like, the basic label. Mm -hmm. So beta one is five. Uh, beta two is seven. Then yes. 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 And beta three is twelve. Uh, tw twenty. Uh, this this uh, thing. This is extra, extra effect. Twenty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and can we scroll to the first example? Uh, to the first. Uh, which first? Uh this one mm -hmm. i think it was yes about beta mm -hmm. so and here beta zero will be again beta zero is just uh, an average number of uh, exam score in a classical in, in in public school with classical program because it corresponds to zero value of all dummy variables mm -hmm. So and bit one is uh... well in this case bit one is a, a bit more uh, more difficult to find, and actually uh, I, because you have to take into account both this uh, row and this row, and you cannot just uh, make uh, you cannot just find this difference, because it is possible that this difference uh, in your data will not coincide with this difference. So in this case, you just fit your model and uh, these betas uh, will be found automatically. It, but this how case, can they be found automatically? Uh, this is found again by uh, minimizing sum of squares of errors. So basically we find such uh, values of uh, betas such that uh, the difference between this table and uh, the actual table that can be constructed from your data is as small as possible. So you find the difference between, you find squares of difference between values that are given by your model and the actual values uh, that you found in your data. And then you try to make these differences as small as possible. Actually, not the difference at, uh, uh, not the difference, but sum of squares of differences. But uh, why should we square it? Why can't it be just a real? 
well, uh, one reason to to take in a square is just to uh, kill a sign to consider positive uh, positive errors with the same sign as negative errors. And there are some other reasons uh, more of mathematical uh, mathematical origins than practical origins um, um, that says that taking squares is a good idea here. So basically, if you have some error, uh, then you usually want to square it, mm -hmm. at least at least in statistics. So, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So let's make a break. Okay. Mm -hmm. But will yes. we continue theoretical parts or just start? Oh, well, uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, I want to discuss it with I Ivan shortly uh, and then decide. Uh, so I think uh, now we will make a break and then uh, we continue with something. It will be a surprise. <laughs> But I stop sharing for now.
Okay, hi everyone. Nice to see you again. Uh, hi. So today we are going to uh, continue to work with our core package, uh, but please, please uh, uh, reinstall it first. Uh, because there was some bug uh, caused by updated version of uh, API. Uh, so please reinstall it. So let's start with uh, uh, loading Tidyverse and please reinstall uh, Argo Core. Uh, for, for me, it says that it has not changed since the last install. Uh, for you, it can be different. Uh, so then, uh, if everything is correct, uh, you will be able to download metadata uh, for uh, different plays, uh, for different drama plays, for, for example, for Russian uh, corpus. Let's try to do that. If you get it, you can do some summary like that, it's a specific summary. Uh, so actually what you download is, uh, uh, what you download is a, a object of classes, uh, of classes, Dracor and da data frame, uh, mainly just a data frame, but with some additional features, for example, you can do uh, summary and get a summary for a corpus, like number of plays, uh, link to the corpus, uh, range of written, premiere, uh, and uh, printing years. Uh, and so, as I remember, you can do something like that. No, 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 you can't. <laughs> uh, I deleted that to make it simple. Okay, so if everything is okay, you can do just, uh, you can just, uh, Look what what's inside uh, uh, inside of this uh, data frame, uh, and you can see that there are many columns. It's like very different meta metadata uh, on uh, place, and each row in this data frame is a play. So, for example, it start with, uh, starts with a Turgenia, Zavtrak, or Predvaditele. Like uh, normalized gear, um, title, subtitle, uh, first author name, um, uh, link to uh, the source uh, where it was gathered, actually. It was actually just uh, modified from Wikisource.org. Uh, when it was written, when it was published, when it was premiered on a scene, uh, some uh, like uh, uh, size of the uh, network. So you can consider a play as a network. Uh, actually just size and the network size and number of characters is the same uh, because just number of uh, vertices in the graph or number of characters, whatever, um, you want, uh, and also there are some additional metric, uh, some additional metrics uh, for uh, graph analysis specifically. So, for example, for example, density of a graph. So, how dense edges are in a graph, uh, diameter of a graph. So, the longest. Uh, the longest path that you can create in the graph. Uh, so it means that from every uh, vertex to every another vertex, you can go through two steps maximum uh, and so on and so on. And also some uh, metrics for uh, number of words, number uh, of uh, words uh, in, uh, in the text, in general and for uh, lines and for stage directions uh, separately. Um, number of speakers, male and female, and so on and so on. Uh, 
Uh, so what is what will be of particular interest for us is uh, the the parameter called normalized gener uh, gener uh, because we want to explore how like uh, can we predict um, uh, size over uh, play based on a gener. So for example, we can uh, try to hypothesize whether there will be difference at all and how it can be explained. So do you think that uh, tragedies, uh, tragedies uh, are in general uh, larger or comedies are in general larger in terms of number of characters? What do you think? Um, excuse me, and could you send us uh, the um, code uh, that you used yeah. because okay. It, it was yes mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in what package there um, there were some bugs uh, that we should reinstall in Tidyverse? Uh no no uh, reinstall uh, Ardra core package because just I updated to uh, uh, I did some small but important fix uh, about this genre because um, API was changed and uh, I needed to update it because without that uh, uh, it returned uh, error. So uh, please update it. Uh, so just use DevTools install GitHub one more time. Uh, and that will be all. So, and then just uh, use library Aracore to import this package and then get this uh database for uh place using uh, uh get draw core function oh actually you don't need our core uh, uh other core and um this uh, call so just get draw core rest will be enough And actually, this you, you don't need this too. Okay. So please do it, and then uh, yes, it means that uh, you need to reinstall the package. That's uh, that's the problem. Actually, uh, uh, this problem means that you have a previous version of a package. Uh, that was error. It's the back of, uh, of, uh, of the package that I fixed today. So please uh, reinstall, run again this line to reinstall the package. And please uh, send me plus if everything is okay and you get something, you can get something like that. If no, just tell me what is the problem. Shouldn't be very long. So I'm waiting for you to do everything. I got this. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's okay. Just warning. Yeah, if you try to download it, it will be full of red. I will just show you how it will look like. Something like that. So you can see it's just full of red, but it's exactly okay because then you have done our record. Okay, good. And I will wait for others too. Uh, if you did everything, you can just you can explore this data frame. Uh, the ways you can, uh, the ways you know about uh, about uh, tidyverse or R in general for now. So you can just calculate, for example, um, 
the most popular authors. Uh, you can um, extract, I know, the longest, the, uh, the largest play, and so on. So if you did everything, uh, don't just relax, try to explore something about this data frame. So you can do actually a lot uh, for now. Okay, uh, Sebastiano, what is the problem? Why minus? What's, uh, what's wrong? Uh, the problem is still the same. Uh, it doesn't change. I reinstalled it and I updated, but the the problem is the same. Same uh, error in uh, the one I sent mm -hmm. you in the chat. Uh, uh, hmm. And you just copied this uh, exactly this line, right? Yes, copy and paste it. Okay, uh, could you just, uh, I know, uh, you can share the screen, by the way. So, so, so what's the, so what the problem with that? Ah, okay, uh, you need to uh, uh, restart R. Okay. And in general, I recommend you, I, I can see that uh, you have different, so that's why actually we use projects because in general, it's recommended to have in different uh, projects, different projects. So it's better to use. So do you remember our studio projects uh, as a like, you know? Uh, yes, but in, in this case, uh, uh, it's just this class and the previous one it was just because it was there about the UD pipe. Uh, and I want to keep all together the UD pipe uh, ah, okay. yeah, because of that. But in general, it's better to, you know, for classes, you have one project, for your I don't know, personal project, you have another project, and so on. Uh, I usually do it this way, and it's really uh, cool because it's really easy to use. So, yeah, just restart uh, and just use library, ardra core, and uh, so on. And okay, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about others? Um, Alexandra. Uh, we should write plus when we uh, uh, when we just uh, run the first uh, lines of code that you send us. Yes. Yes, yes. If you if you get uh, something like that, if you can do. Uh, do you, could you share your screen again? Could you share yep. your screen? Sorry. If you do something ah, okay. like that, get uh, get uh, summary. I mean that you do not get some error, so you. Uh, so you, so basically, just to check that you successfully download it uh, with uh, uh, data set. Uh, and okay, I, I hope you remember uh, the function count. Uh, the just uh, calculate a frequency table for some specific uh, column in a, a table or data frame. And let's do it. And we can see that um, uh, in Russian corpus, in Russian drama corpus, uh, there are 88 comedies, uh, uh, 29 uh, tragedies, and for 94 plays, there is no there is no available information whether it's tragedy, tragedy or uh, comedy. Maybe because it's more complicated. Maybe because we just didn't uh, encode it yet. I mean, uh, we just do not have information on that. So uh, let's just, uh, if you want to explore uh, influence of uh, uh, this gender on, uh, for example, uh, network size, I mean, number of characters, uh, we would just drop this on a value for now. So, uh, this can be done just using function drop on a. Drop on a is a function from uh, the function from uh, tidy package that is included in uh, tidyverse. So 
if you imported tidyverse, everything would be okay. If no, uh, there will be an error. Okay, so now we still have many, many columns, but we are interested, for now we're interested only in two. Uh, we're interested in uh, normalized genre and size. Actually, the size is encoded in several different columns, uh, but it doesn't matter. So we call, we'll just uh, extract uh, genre and size. We could also extract, for example, titles and subtitles or type titles and afters, but well, let's just keep it simple. And if you do, you will get the, this uh, very simple data frame. Normalized gender and size. So, so what do you think uh, actually? Uh, would it be uh, bigger uh play if it is a, a tragedy or if it is a comedy what do you think or maybe there is no difference at all just try to think just like with your common sense with your common knowledge uh, what you you would expect Maybe in some cases, uh, tragedies would be larger than uh, the comedies. Uh, uh, and in some cases, uh, uh, they would be equal. Mm -hmm. But it means that in general, tragedies will be in general a bit larger, right? And yes. Why uh, I don't know maybe about the Russian tragedies, but uh, I know, for example, that it is um, quite impossible to full stage, uh, like full Hamlet uh, play uh, from uh, from the beginning to end. So uh, it is very often um, shortened. Uh, so yeah, and uh, this Nedrusil uh, by Van Wiesen, I know that it is not so large, but uh, I don't know about the Russian but By size, we, we mean actually not number of uh, words, but number of characters. But of course they correlated. I think uh, it's pretty simple that the more, uh, the longer you play, the more you have characters. I think it's, uh, we can test it actually. Uh, it will be very simple. I mean, I mean, why do, do, do we need to wait for, uh, for the good um, time? We can just do it right now. Um, let's say size and uh, rule. Uh, let's say word count text. And yeah, they're correlated. So yeah, so do you understand what, what's happening there? So we just created a number of uh, words for a play with a, a number of characters and we see for, for Russian corpus. And we see that the reason general correlation um, zero dot three, is it a large or is it a small? What do you think? It's for correlation, just if we like return to correlation. The value here is uh, very small, as I understand. So our yeah. alternative hypothesis holds true. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yes. So yes, but uh, actually the question that I ask is whether the correlation is small or large, and the value uh, does not answer us this question. Uh, because it, the only uh, question uh, that it asked is whether it's uh, possible to achieve this or even more radical results if no hold, uh, if uh, no hypothesis is true. Uh, and yes, we can say that yeah, if no hypothesis is true, it's very improbable to get this or even higher correlation. But it doesn't say as whether it's high or low because. 
actually, if you have very high uh, sample size, uh, if you have very high sample size, even small correlation will be uh, very significant. Uh, so yeah, it's actually much more complicated question because there is no such thing as in general low or high correlation. Of course, we can compare, for example, to correlations in other uh, fields. Uh, but well, no, no. In general, we can say that the correlation is high and low, but it can be somewhat different in different fields. Uh, and I think that in this case, it's quite strong correlation because you know we explore uh, you know, dramas, we explore art, uh, and we explore something that was created by humans. And in this case, uh, such correlation will be considered, uh, well, at least not, it will be not considered as large, but at least medium or like small to medium uh, correlation. Uh, there is a like a coins table uh, that says that this correlation, like as far as I remember, 0 0.2 is small, 0 0.5 is medium, 0 0.7 is large. But it's just, uh, you know, uh, just, to have at least, you know, some um, something to compare. So okay, let's return to our uh, variables of interest: size and normalized gender. So yeah, you can uh, do. Maybe you have any like explanations why uh, strategies can be larger or vice versa. So. Any hypothesis behind it? Just try to. I mean, it, it shouldn't be based on uh, like uh, your uh, philology, education, uh, whether you have it or you have it or not. Just uh, try to uh, apply common sense and uh, just uh, create a hypothesis. Just. Uh, from common sense, what do you think? And what did we found? We found just the correlation between uh, the any genre, uh, genre and um, uh, the um, size of the um, words of the characters, or we find uh, by applying the correlation test, uh, uh, we found out that the tragedies are larger. So what no, no, no. did we, Here we just uh, explored all uh, plays together. So we just like uh, talked about, I just started to talk about uh, that we explore here number of characters, not number of words. And I said that I think it's obvious that they are related, but it's uh, easier. It's very easy to just to check it, not just to talk that in, in theory, they should be correlated. But uh, when, when you have data, when you have R, this all things that you uh, talk about, you don't need to explore, explore literature, you can just test it just with one line of code. So it just, it was uh, something that was not, um, let's say, um, so, so it was not uh, of our interest that we just like uh, uh, talked about that and tested just in one line so we, we just uh, so we, we just found out that there is a correlation but uh, we d uh, we do not know now uh, in which uh, way uh, they correlate yes? yeah 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 so in general the more uh, the uh, the higher uh, number of words in the play the more uh, characters but uh, well, Correlation is not causation. Uh, it can be because uh, because of many reasons. I mean, literally, uh, literally many reasons. Uh, so yeah, we have a connection, but we don't. We cannot say that it's because X influences Y or Y influences X. Or maybe it's just uh, you know, another variable influences uh, this too. But let's so now, to... so now we should write a code that uh, would answer our questions about tragedies and comedies. 
No, 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 no. I just, it just doesn't matter. I just even uh, commented this code uh, just because it was just to, uh, I know. Uh, no, but 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 could we could we write such a code that uh, we could say so if it is um, so uh, dear R, please mm -hmm. find us a correlation between uh, tragedies and the word size and or comedies and word size. So how how uh, could we do that? Mm. So uh, could you re repeat your question, please? Because it's I mean important because actually. Yes, so if uh, I uh, want to uh, find a correlation between the uh, genre and uh, the mm -hmm. um, and the number of uh, words or characters in this play, uh, how could I do this using R? Uh, so you want to explore relationship between uh, gender and uh, size or gender and this correlation. So what, what, what the hypothesis that you have? I mean, I want to understand. Um, um, okay, maybe I, I would say it uh, in, in Russian. Я хотел бы найти корреляцию между жанром пьесы, то есть трагедии или комедии. Uh -huh. uh, и uh, количеством слов uh, в этой пьесе или количеством знаков в этой пьесе. Окей, mm. okay. basically what we, we are going to do, I mean, this right now. Yes, so, uh, yes, so, uh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's exactly what we do, but we do it not for a uh, number of words, but for a uh, number of characters, but we can easily do it for a number of words just to change the variable uh actually you can do it different ways and it's, an, it's important to understand uh that uh where this uh, ways will be different and where this ways will be the same but basically all this ways will lead you to the same result uh so in this case so let's return to gender and uh, number of characters uh, because we study now linear regressions, uh, we can do it using a uh, linear uh, regression. So using uh, our LM function. So previously, uh, when we did uh, linear regression, we used a uh, predictor. So uh, I hope you remember that uh, to the left side uh, of the teeth that you have uh, something like an out something like a, uh, an outcome so something that you want to predict and uh, to the right uh, you have a predictor or predictors so you can set several predictors uh, or you can have just uh, one uh, so in this case normalized gender uh, is the predictor previously we used a uh, uh, we used some continuous variables for predictors, uh, but it is not um, it is not necessary. It is important that for outcome in linear regression, uh, you have you have continuous variable, because otherwise uh, assumptions of linear regression will be broken uh, too hard. And if you have some, uh, for example, if you want to predict if you have an as an outcome some uh, not uh, continuous variable, but for example binary variable. So, for example, you want to predict whether it's comedy or not. Uh, in this case, you need to use not linear regression, but for example uh, logistic regression. That's a bit more complicated, but in general the logic is more or less the same. It's like linear regression but logistic. I think we will cover it later. Uh, but for predictor, it just doesn't matter. We can have everything we want there. Uh, so we can have uh, continuous variable as a predictor. We can have binary uh, variable as a predictor, or we can have even uh, uh, some uh, categorical uh, uh, variable as a predictor. 
And how does it work? Why can it be possible? I mean, so you, you, what you studied during the last uh, two lectures. Mm, regression models. Yes, and uh, you explored actually this uh, categorical predictors in linear regression models. And uh, so how can you do that, like in theory? We introduced dummy variables. Yes, exactly. So you use dummy variables. Uh, actually, in R, dummy variables are created automatically when you just use uh, a predictor as a, if you use a for predictor categorical variable, for example, just a character column, right? Uh, it will use this dummy coding, dummy variables, uh, just automatically. So you don't need to specify dummy coding by yourself. Uh, and let's see how it will work. Uh, so this is a way to actually, LM function is very old function. It, uh, it is a function that came from a, a language uh, S that was like uh, much, much before uh, the R. It is a, what is what was before R. Uh, and actually, it's a bit con it, uh, a bit contradicts the logic of tidyverse. Uh, but actually, you can use this LM function inside the tidyverse this way. So uh, first, uh, because in general, in R, uh, you have as a first uh, argument, you have uh, some data. But for LM function, you have the formula first. Uh, okay, you just write the formula, then you uh, you use comma, and then what uh, you, you put uh, this dot means that uh, the result of uh, this comment before the pipe uh, will be used as a data set uh, as a uh, as a uh, argument for the second variable that is a data. So it seems a bit strange, but the logic of that, I mean, programming logic behind that is uh, such. Okay, so, and now, uh, what do we received? What do you think is it? Try to inter interpret the results that you received here. I mean, yes, this one, I mean, it's just uh, what we run, but what are these coefficients? What is this? Maybe it's an average size of, of a, so here a normalized uh, genre uh, tragedies is written. So maybe it's an average size of a normal tragedy. Mm, no, no. Uh, you need to re return to the logic of understanding of what uh, is linear regression. And linear regression is just a fitting uh, a line, at least in case you have one predictor, you should have one, uh, uh, more predictors, something like a fitting a plane in three dimensional space. But if you have just uh, one predictor and one outcome, you just fit the line that perfectly fits your data, the best fit of your data. So if keeping in mind that, what are these coefficients should be? It should be just uh, coefficients for this regression line. So remember that uh, line is defined uh, by a formula AX plus B. Or if we talk about a uh, linear regression line, it's usually called uh, beta one X plus, plus beta zero. Beta zero is uh, intercept uh, and beta one, it's something that is multiplied by X uh, to, to predict the value. So, uh, so we uh, predict uh, our prediction for uh, 
numbers for number of characters for the play is uh, 12 and something plus 7 multiplied on 0 or 1. And it depends on whether it's a strategy or not. So if you have only two uh, categories for categorical, uh, categorical variables, it's very simple. So we uh, encode, for example, comedy as zero and, tra uh, and tragedy by uh, as one. It's just a uh, very simple dummy coding uh, for predictor with two categorical variables. So just tragedy, tra tragedy becomes one and comedy becomes zero. Actually, we can do this dummy coding even by ourselves. Uh, we can just say uh, mutate uh, and uh, instead of uh, normalized gender, we can create uh, we can create uh, we can create a dummy variable that will be oh, let's say uh, normalized gender equal equal uh, tragedy. It will return us uh, true or false, but we want to, to make it explicit, we want to convert it as, uh, to numeric, as numeric, and it will just uh, make a, uh, uh, convert false to zero and uh, true to one. I hope you understand this logic, it's pretty straightforward. So we just compare uh, the value in this column, normal gender, uh, with, uh, with the value uh, tragedy. Uh, if you have on corresponding place uh, comedy, you have zero. If you have tragedy, you have one. Uh, and then you can use, instead of normal gender, this is tragedy variable, and you'll get actually the same result. We can even compare where what is yeah yes the same right uh, so basically this uh, this operation that we did uh, explicitly there uh, so we converted this categorical variables uh, categorical variable to dummy variable it's something that lm function does by default implicitly if we just use uh, for predictor character variable. So we don't really need to create a uh, dummy variable by ourselves, but it's important to understand that inside of this, uh, uh, inside, inside of this uh, uh, LM function, uh, what's actually happening and uh, just convert this Categorical variable to this numerical variable. Okay, so again, what are these results? What are these coefficients uh, stand for? Uh, they actually mean that uh, uh, if we predict a uh, number of um, characters for the play, uh, it will be uh, 12 and something. Uh, it doesn't depend on tragedies, comedies, and so on. And uh, uh, variable is tragedy multiplied by seven and something. Uh, actually, let me uh, let me uh, save it as a separate variable. Uh, model model gender gender rules model what you can even do with that is that uh, you can predict the values with this very simple linear model 
generous model and you have new data and from new data you just create a new data frame and it's important that uh, for this data frame you have at least uh, one variable is strategy uh, and let's say it's uh, zero so we created here very very simple data frame of just one value actually uh right uh so if it is a not tragedy i mean comedy in this case so it will be like uh prediction of the model will be uh 12 and something uh uh 12 and something characters uh we can even uh do rounding to make it because i don't know i mean it seems that uh it's strange prediction that it will be not uh, integer, right? We expect uh, some integer number, right? Uh, and we, if you if you use for a strategy not uh, zero but one, so we want to predict number of characters for tra tra tragedy. It will be different. So it will be uh, this number multiply by uh, plus multiply uh, this number by one. So actually just this number plus this one. So prediction for uh, comedies is this number and predict, uh, prediction for tragedies is this number plus this number. So actually using this information, you can tell me whether uh, whether tra tragedies are bigger than uh, comedies. For this data set. Mm, could you share your code? I have some errors. Uh, okay. I sent it and did you receive it in uh, in a chat because yes, it, yes. it says that uh, it was sent by me, but I don't know to see the code actually. Uh, but try to try to tell me the answer. Try to answer uh, my question. So uh, whether tragedies or uh, comedies are bigger in this data set. Mm, so uh, what, uh, what is uh, 13 and what is 20 here? What does uh, this numbers mean? Uh, these numbers are uh, uh, coefficients for the line. So, I mean, if you uh, let me draw, Ah, no, I, I, I won't, don't want to draw actually. I, I, I can draw it in, in R, it will be <laughs> uh, better. Um, so what is it? Um, okay, let's try to do some very simple. Okay, let's see if this is what. Lot. Uh, Let's see, I'll take this. And then to the plot, I guess x equal to, uh, I will say, we'll use this line too. This property. And by y, we have uh, size. Uh, yeah. I will add some, maybe, um, I will add some, no, no, I will not add this person. Let's try it like this, and maybe alpha equal to 
new dot six to avoid overlapping. Just try to avoid. Okay. Um, thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, can avoid to <laughs> can avoid uh, uh, improving the pictures even though it's just an example. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, that, that is something like a scatter plot, right? Uh, for this variable, so for for, uh, for x we have e strategy, e strategy uh, variable. So whether the play is tra uh, tragedy or not, uh, and for y you have uh, network size, the number of characters. Uh, and what are these coefficients exactly? Right. Uh, let's do. From Abline, uh, and you need to use for slope for intercept. First. Intercept. Uh, you will use coefficients one. So, in general rules model, dollar coefficients you can get these coefficients. So the first coefficient. I use for uh, b in a x plus b uh, for b for x plus uh, plus b equation, and the second coefficient uh, tragedy I use for I use for uh, a uh, variable in a x plus b. Uh, formula and let's have a look. So you can see that it draws a line, right? And it's slightly, you know, increasing. It's not just fast increasing, but it's just uh, slightly increasing. So this line is the best fit for this data. Uh, you cannot find a better line uh, if you measure betterness by sum of square uh, sum of square uh, of differences to this line so if you calculate uh, sum of squares of difference to this line uh, this uh, sum of squares will be uh, the minimal possible for different lines um, for different uh, uh, for different lines, right? So it is the best line, and this intercept and e strategy coefficients are coefficients of this line. So intercept basically means what the line will be if uh, e strategy uh, e strategy uh, variable will be zero. And another way to, uh, to uh, interpret it is uh, like uh, uh, intercept will be a mean for, uh, for comedies and intercept plus a strategy will be a mean for tragedies. You can even check it um, by let's rule. Okay, let's just check that. And then uh, group by normalized gender. And then summarize. In times. Like, yeah, exactly what I said. That, uh, actually, it can be considered this coefficients 
I mean, for at least for this simple example, because uh, in this simple example, we have only uh, one category with two, uh, one categorical variable with two categories. Uh, uh, so in this case, it's pretty simple. So uh, this coefficient also can be interpre interpreted as a, a mean value for uh, tragedies, mean network size for tra uh, tra tragedies. And uh, this coefficient, if you sum it with intercept, you will get a mean value for uh, tragedies. For network size of uh, network size of tragedies. So, is it clear? So we can know uh, the answer to this question without uh, the regression models, and we can know it um, using the mean size. And so there are two ways to know this, right? Yeah, but the, yes, actually, um, actually, we can even uh, ask another question. We can ask like whether the means are different, and we can also use not. Uh, uh, we can calculate means, and it, we can also do t-test on these network sizes. And what is interesting that basically you get exactly the same uh, results in test of in terms of uh, no hypothesis significant sizes. But what is what is important that uh, I asked you about that uh, whether in this dat a data set. Uh, uh, tragedies uh, are larger than comedies or vice versa. And now you have this answer, answer that yes, tragedies are bigger than comedies for this data set. And you don't need some null hypothesis testing uh, to say something about your data set. But maybe we can think of this uh, data set some in some kind of sample of uh, bigger um, uh, bigger space uh, of possible uh, and maybe actual place that were not included in this data set. So we just included not of course not uh, not uh, all drama plays, but just the most uh, important, like canon. Uh, or something like that. Uh, and well, it's maybe not uh, not uh, the um, random sample from the bigger space of place. Uh, and that's a problem, some kind of um, actually uh, to make some statistical conclusions. But we can assume that this uh, data set is just a sample of bigger population of uh, drama plays. And we want to do some statistical conclusions based on our sample about some bigger population. And in this case, we need to use statistical inference, like p-values and all the things. And uh, to do that, to do that, we need to uh, use function summary for this model. And now we get all these p-values and so on. Actually, what we did previously, uh, but for um, continuous predictor variables. Uh, now we have uh, categorical one, but it doesn't really matter. We have more or less the same results uh, in terms of uh, what we get there. So we have these uh, coefficients. And uh, well, we have standard error for them. So basically standard error of them uh, for them means that uh, we try to estimate uh, potential variability of this uh, estimate because we actually assume that okay in our specific sample we get this uh, uh, we, we get this uh, uh, regression coefficients but in other it can be a bit different 
and all this uh, estimates just some uh, like estimates of true coefficients of true line that exists between these two uh, variables. So if you draw experiments several times, we'll get slightly different lines, but we assume that there is some general real line between them. And we try to estimate it, uh, these coefficients, and we try to estimate a standard error of these uh, coefficients. Uh, and uh, then we just, if we divide estimate by standard error, we get t value, just like the same t value that we used in t test actually. Uh, and based on that, we can calculate uh, p value. So probability of getting this uh, estimate or even uh, this t statistic or even more radical uh, if no hypothesis is true. What is no hypothesis in this case? Actually, we have several null no, no hypotheses for several coefficients. So for every coefficient, we have specific uh, null no hypothesis. And what do you think, what is this uh, null no hypothesis? How can you formulate it? Maybe that they are equal, like the comedies and the tragedies. No? Uh, no, we talk about coefficients. Yeah, I mean, in general, you're right. But uh, how can we formulate this new hypothesis in terms of these coefficients? Like intercept coefficient, uh, like intercept coefficient can be also interpreted in this way. It's like how it's, um, how the line is, uh, whether it's uh, high or low, uh, compared to uh, OX horizontal line. So you can see that uh, this line, it's like above zero uh, X line. And that means that it has a positive uh, interest of coefficient. If it's like below the line, uh, if it's uh, lower than the line, uh, it will have negative intercept coefficient. And if it, uh, if it is zero, it means that it's like, it actually crosses uh, uh, OX in a zero. So uh, it actually goes through zero, zero point. In this case, it, uh, it, it doesn't, and it's like higher, right? So, uh, Again, what do you think is a null hypothesis uh, in terms of these coefficients uh, in linear regression? That they are equal to zero, no? Yes, is that they are equal to zero. So that like uh, real uh, coefficients uh, for intercept and for east tragedy are equal to zero. And p-values, respective p-values, are uh, like uh, estimation of uh, probability of uh, getting uh, uh, this uh, and even uh, higher or uh, lower. Uh, uh, so far uh, estimates uh, from zero uh, if no hypothesis is true. So for example, in this case, it means that, uh, yeah, it's very, very improbable to get estimate uh, like this if no hypothesis is that uh, intercept is zero. Uh, what does it mean in theory? Try to, to, to interpret it, it as like, more general, what it means in terms of uh, place, in terms of drama. So you mean what does uh, this uh, zero coefficient uh, means in terms of place? Yeah, yeah. 
It's a tricky question actually because I mean maybe you 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 could you can guess why it's a tricky question and why it's actually not so meaningful. But now we're checking just for the tragedies, right? Because uh, uh, there is like an intercept and is tragedy. Um, but um, yeah, so if the coefficient is zero, so uh, we so do we uh, know something about the comedies if we're checking for the tragedies? Uh, in this case, it means that, uh, yeah, uh, if you return to interpretation that we discussed before, we can say in this case that uh, this estimate uh, means just uh, actually average uh, number of characters for comedies. Um, so, uh, in the simple case, right? Mm, so, it means no sense because, uh, so if it, uh, if you have zero, so it yeah. means that the comedies have zero characters. Yeah. Right? So, Exactly. It's actually why we are not we are not really uh, usually interested uh, in this p-value for intercept because it just says yeah for like uh, some condition uh, it uh, it is like not zero but okay yes I mean for example for uh, if you use for example for um, I don't know weights and uh, uh and uh, different diets it will mean that uh, for some diet uh or some uh, or absence or absence of any diet uh your weight is not equal to zero well i mean that's pretty obvious i mean that's not something where uh, we will be uh, actually uh surprised if it will be if, if, if it will be different but actually we are we are not interested in this uh intercept usually i mean uh p values in, uh, for intercept because they're uh, usually they're in most cases significant because i mean yes it's not zero <laughs> it's quite obvious uh it will be very very strange to have a play without uh characters we usually do not consider it, uh, it, uh, it as a play uh, so yeah, it just uh, doesn't say anything important for us uh, in terms of theory, uh, in terms of uh, literature studies. But this one is much more important because it says that uh, 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 whether it's a surprise for us uh that estimate is such is such big in terms of absolute value so uh, if it be in another direction so minus seven it will be still has the same significance so uh so it's uh, uh so what how do you inter interpret that estimate is zero for each tragedy That uh, the tragedies and comedies are equal, right? Guys. Right, exactly, exactly. So that is why we're interested in uh, this uh, p-value. So it says that, uh, like, basically, uh, null hypothesis for this is tragedy means that uh, there is no uh, difference in terms of uh, network size for uh, uh, tragedies and comedies. And if p value is less than our alpha, that is usually zero, zero, 005, we can uh, reject our new hypothesis and uh, say that, okay, we can say that, yeah, tra uh, seems that tragedies are bigger than comedies in terms of number of characters. Uh, also, you have other p, uh, p values here, but you can you can find out that actually this p-value is the same as this p-value. Uh, it will work only for uh, only uh, for cases uh, with uh, simple linear regression when you have only one predictor. I mean, uh, one uh, continuous predictor. Uh, 
uh, or one categorical predictor with just two categories. Uh, because it's a, a like a p value for the whole model, but our whole model consists only one like uh, uh, one variable that depends on uh, that uh, that uh, one can fish it uh, uh, that is uh, multiplied by some data points some uh, x. Uh, so these p values are the same in this particular case. Um, okay, we are almost out of time. But uh, try to do uh, the same thing, but for uh, another variable in this data set. Uh, I mean, use the same predictor, normalized gender. Uh, in uh, rules uh, uh, Russian drama corpus, uh, but use another outcome. Uh, you can do whatever you can take whatever you want. I mean, take some uh, numeric uh, uh, variable. Try to find uh, by yourself something that is uh, interesting for you. Uh, but you can just uh, use word count text. If you don't want to choose anything particular. So try to do linear regression with uh, predictor normalized gender and some another outcome. Choose whatever you want. And please uh, press plus if you uh, if you finish this. Uh, exercise. Also, maybe you have other questions. I want uh, you to what uh, what is uh, what was the measure of the size? So this eleven and uh, so now I'm looking at the table and I see that uh, there are just eleven, seven, three, etc. So it uh, mm, number of measurement. What is the number of measurement? Is it thousands uh, of words or is um, uh, do you know it like uh sorry number of what look okay well it needs is millennia or parameter size against it what's it it uh yes То есть наш вывод, что в трагедиях персонажей больше, чем в комедиях, так получается? Ну, получается так, да. А, интересно. Ну, это интересный вопрос. Maybe because there are many small comedies. So there is a big number of comedies that are just uh, small, uh, one, two things, uh, where just like uh, some miniature uh, plays that uh, uh, have. Uh, very limited number, very, very limited number of characters and very limited number of scenes. Uh, 
uh, with uh, this round one event. Like actually, for example, a resort is very short. Not very short, but rather short. And based on should we should we mutate it or not or we just uh, select oh, no. uh, what mm. i did there there uh, with mutated strategy is just to show you how uh lm function works inside but you don't need to do it by yourself because it's just something that uh, lm will make for you so And next time we'll do some more complicated dynamic variables uh, when we have not two categories, but for example, three categories, because uh, there will be a bit more complicated, uh, but certainly we will not able to cover this today. So I have written this uh, three lines of code. So I just yeah. changed size with a word a context. And so what should I should I do next to, uh, to know and everything you else? That you have uh, an extra pipe that you need to delete because otherwise it will be like uh, not finished uh, comment. Uh, uh, yes. And then uh, you, ah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, then no, you, then you need to write a pipe uh, and then actually apply the model. Uh, and uh, you can do it uh, just inside the pipe line uh, using function LM this way. So uh, you apply the results of your calculation. So you just selected, uh, selected uh, variables that you are interested in. You did this uh, uh, drop a name normalized gener. Uh, but actually, you can omit it. I think. Ah, no, no, no. You need. I, I think you need to keep it. But I'm not sure. I think it will give you just the same result because it will drop an A automatically. Uh, so, in I mean, in the lamp function. Uh, so then you need to just uh, uh, send results of this uh, uh, calculations. Uh, as a argument for the uh, for uh, as a uh, input for argument data, uh, and you need to write a formula for the linear regression, and in your case it will be different than in my case, so you need to specify predictor and outcome, outcome size and predictor is yours, and that will give you a model that you can later use in different ways so what you can do you can do just uh you can just get uh coefficients you can use summary function for the model to get uh p values and so on and so on uh well basically that's the most important that you can do or you can do even actually explore this object because actually this generous model is an object of class LM that is basically a list with specific attributes. For example, if you explore it, you can like extract coefficients as a uh, vector uh, and use it, for example, to draw the line. Like I use it here. So you use, so I, uh, like, um, Mm. How to say? I refer to this uh, uh, file structure uh, to uh, to this variable structure. I find I found item coefficients, and then I extract the first value of these coefficients uh, vector and so on. Okay, so who successfully did something and what did you get? I get errors. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> mm, I don't know. So 
and writing something like yeah and uh -huh. it doesn't work um this model mm. word count text is strategy data seems to be okay for me i don't see any uh or maybe uh maybe it was just the previous error so if we run it once once we time ah oh, yeah yeah so now and yeah, now i get something yeah and what are the results let me create here too because to oh, to everything. Uh, so here I use instead of size for context, and here instead of uh, size as outcome, I use word context, and I use generous uh, words model. Okay, I will not change it. I just the same. I get some coefficients. So it basically means for no tragedies, uh, mean number of uh, awards is uh, 11,720. Uh, but uh, for tragedies, it's a bit lower. So actually, tragedy is in general a bit lower. It's actually a bit strange because, uh, so it's interesting that, uh, uh, and what is important that coefficient here is not significant. So we can have no hypothesis. So because it's actually very, 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 very probable to get even more differences if no hypothesis is true. So actually, in most cases, we'll get even higher coefficient there. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, uh, if no hypothesis is true, and we just sample many, many times, in general, we'll get this coefficient uh, higher, I mean, more negative or more positive uh, than minus 100 and something. That's how you can interpret it. I have I have a question, and uh, so now that we know that uh, in uh, in Russian um, comedies are larger, so uh, how could we uh, do using R? How could we uh, just um, uh, ask R to show us uh, all uh, the titles of all the tragedies? Because I have maybe end of the year of the. Uh, when when it just it was written because uh, I have a hypothesis that maybe it was written um, in the beginning of the nineteenth century. So maybe it was written in some time when the tragedies were sh shorter. Yes, yes, you can uh, just uh, use information from this uh, that frame. For example, you can use here normalized. Just this is uh, the more simple way. Uh, uh, but actually, there are three like years for this uh, uh, three years uh, for uh, this. Uh, uh, maybe just uh, how to uh, say to us, show us all the tragedies. How to do this? Mm, the titles of all the tragedies, like title and subtitle. I don't know. Ah, okay. Yes. Let's just do it like that. Uh, rule filter uh, filter we use we use to extract uh, only rows that we're interested in. So normalized gener equal to tragedy. Right now we have uh, some smaller data set. And then what we can do, we can just select, for example, uh, uh, variables that we are interested in, for example, title, uh, let's say normalized year, 
So let's say written year, written year start. If it's oh, written year finish, I think. Start. I think written years because uh, for some place it is not uh, known whether when it was written when it was uh, uh, when it was written, and for some uh, for some it is not uh, known exactly. For example, we have some range. Maybe it was written in one thousand fifty, or maybe it was written in one thousand fifty one. Uh, or you can just uh, do even more simple way, just use normalized year. I think it's like that. No, it doesn't exist. Let's check it somewhere. Being year normalized. Oh, fuck. Uh, year normalized. Yep. Uh, and you can see that. Как отранжировать их от uh, самого раннего года к самому позднему году? Yes, uh, you can just uh, uh, use function arrange. Arrange year normalized. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it's, I think it's over for the class, just a uh, few answers. Uh, and let's also add uh, I think first author or something like that because uh, I want to know who is the author. First author name. First author name. Yep. It's like that. Sumarokov, Sumarokov, Lomonosov, Sumarokov, 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 Lomonosov, Hirastov, Hirastov. I don't know them except for Lomonosov. <laughs> Krulov. So yeah, then you yeah. So as I as I see, uh, the majority of the of these tragedies are written before the year eighteen uh, uh, fourteen. Like yeah, and then just a few like uh, Lermontov, Nikrasov, three by Tolstoy, one Mirishkovsky, one Andreev. Yeah. So so the majority uh, were written in the classicism. Period. Yes, yeah, so yeah. maybe that is the reason why they are uh, yes, there. Maybe, maybe it's uh, actually a good explanation because, it, yeah, actually it's uh, uh, it's important to, to, to remember that uh, there is some bias inside uh, this uh, uh, data. And in this case, it's, uh, it's I mean, it's not avoidable, uh, avoidable in general. I mean, um, uh because you cannot i mean the only thing that you can do you can include all uh plays that were published but even though for not popular plays uh there will be not enough information that so they will be ex excluded so we'll be all biased to some uh, more popular epochs or popular authors and so on so yeah, it's not available, but unfortunately, that's a problem. I mean, it's a real problem. So, I think that's, uh, that's all for today. So if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed uh, learning how to do uh, uh, linear regression in R using dummy variables. Uh, and uh, see you next time. Bye. And maybe uh, uh, could you um, uh, could you send to the Telegram chat the uh, IMD files for the previous lecture and for today's lecture, like uh, for today's class and previous class? Or... Previous class, I, I sent you uh, the script. Uh, for this class, I can send it, of course. I usually send it. Mm -hmm. I can I can send you can check but uh, and uh, where uh, where did you because uh, I can see for for the yes, for the fifteens yes it was sent ah uh, yes yes okay thank, thank you. you yeah okay we'll send it in just five minutes so yep thank so, you goodbye welcome bye thank you.
Thank you.